Hi, it's Tim Kelly with another video in our series about the new paradigm of business. This is the second video that goes into the current structures and beliefs of the existing paradigm of business. In the last video, we looked at myths about money and motivation. In this video, we're going to look at a very pervasive structure in the current paradigm, which is hierarchy. As I said in earlier videos, a paradigm consists of a set of collectively held beliefs. In this case, the belief is that companies should be organized as hierarchies. And that belief is actually rooted in a deeper belief, which is that unless one person is in charge and held accountable for the results, nothing good will result. So how did we get here? Well, this is very interesting. Hierarchy is a 5,500 year old system which when it was first developed proved to be an extraordinary innovation. And it was used to organize things like military organizations or to build pyramids. And to this day, it's actually very well suited for those applications. So for example, a military unit under fire that needs to be able to respond extremely quickly with instantaneous decision making and no debates actually functions very efficiently as a hierarchy. Also in a project like building a pyramid where the people who are executing on the tasks know far less than the people giving the instructions about those tasks and about the overall project, it actually works fairly well. Unfortunately, neither of these situations is prevalent in the business environment today, yet we still use hierarchy in pretty much every situation. So uh, when I'm speaking to audiences of CEOs, uh, I like to use the following metaphor. So if you were to hire a structural engineer to decide how to build a bridge across a river, that engineer would likely explore a lot of different parameters like the width of the river and how, how strong the soil is and how strong the currents and winds are and how deep the water is to decide between the various different structures that are possible to use in constructing a bridge, like a suspension bridge or a trestle or just a flat bridge with posts underneath it. I'm not a structural engineer, but there are many different options and that would be the person's job. Likewise, if you hired a network administrator to design a network topology for a business, um, that person would want to know about bandwidth and storage and access to the internet and numbers of employees and response time and all sorts of other things to decide on the best network topology for that particular application. Well, even though we do this in other areas, we don't do this when it comes to organizing our companies. As business leaders, we do not sit down generally and ask the question, what is the best organizational structure to use for the particular application in question. We just default to hierarchy in pretty much every single situation. Now, um, in order to be able to do something other than that, we would have to know what some of the alternatives were and know the pros and cons of hierarchy and some of its alternatives. Um, so let's go a little bit into the pros and cons of hierarchy. As I said before, if it's just about getting people to follow orders, like in a military situation or a situation where people are doing very, very simple rote tasks, like screwing caps onto toothpaste tubes, hierarchy works fairly well. However, hierarchy tends to stifle innovation and reduce employee engagement. This is because being fed a steady diet of decisions that you didn't make and other people expect you to implement is not very engaging. Now realizing this, business leaders have tried to incorporate various different bells and whistles and to improve on hierarchy and how it functions and performs. And so we now have sort of a kinder, gentler version of hierarchy that we're using with a lot of tweaks to it, but it's still basically hierarchy. Um, and we're not really exploring and examining the various other organizational alternatives. So um, another interesting feature that I want to point out is that hierarchy inspires a consciousness of being a victim in everyone who participates in it, especially in a very large hierarchy. The higher the hierarchy extends, the, the greater the number of levels in the hierarchy, the more pronounced this effect is. Now it's pretty clear to see why the people at the bottom of the hierarchy feel like victims, 
But I can tell you from doing a lot of coaching and consulting with executives and executive teams that the people at the top of the hierarchy often also feel like victims. And CEO clients have spent hours complaining about how people don't support their vision and the people under them are bucking for promotion and jockeying for position instead of working as a team and all sorts of different like this, which are unconscious side effects of using hierarchy as an organizational structure. So in the new paradigm, what's going to happen is leaders will sit down and say, well, of the various organizational alternatives, which is the one that's best suited for this particular application? What are its pros and cons? And should we use this or something else? And over the course of the life cycle of an organization, they may also choose um, different organizational structures to use at different stages in the life cycle because the organization has different challenges and different needs. And I want to give you one little case study because this swims so much upstream against people's belief systems that it can be hard to actually absorb. So Toyota found out years ago that when they put the employees working on the front lines in the factories, which one would think would be a very classic case for using hierarchy and was throughout the Industrial Revolution, when they put the workers in charge rather than so-called process experts who were going to uh, make things more efficient, they found out the workers could actually figure out how to make the assembly line run better than the efficiency experts could quality went up, productivity went up, and employee engagement went up as a result. And it was very difficult for other organizations to be able to duplicate Toyota's success, in my opinion, because they were not willing to take the step of putting the employees completely in charge, which is what actually produced the result. So that's just one simple case study and there are plenty of others. And in future videos, we will examine some of these other new paradigm organizational structures that may be more suitable for your organization than hierarchy. Thanks and look forward to seeing you in future videos.